Mine danger remains one of the main threats in the Black Sea, said Dmitro Plitinchuk, spokesman for the Ukrainian Navy. He also noted that mines are a common problem for Ukraine and its Black Sea neighbors. Among them are three NATO members, Romania, Bulgaria and Turkey, according to Front News Media outlet. We have a lot of such work to do, we do it every day to organize security for our export-import corridor. However, the Black Sea still needs a full-fledged demoning operation. It has already been planned, a headquarters has been established, and ship crews are preparing. However, now, due to the Montreux Convention, these ships cannot enter the Black Sea, Plitinchuk said according to Plitinchuk, the Ukrainian crews that were preparing to use the UK's Cherkasy and Chernihiv ships have already been trained. They are already on duty. Last year they received a first level of compatibility with NATO countries. This year, we hope to get the highest rating, the second level of compatibility. In addition, three more ships are being prepared for transfer from the Netherlands and Belgium. And these crews are already receiving training. In total, we plan to receive five mine-resistant ships, said Plitinchuk. The spokesman also described the situation in the Black and Azov Seas. The situation is currently stable, the missile carriers are at their basing point in Novorossiysk. Only a patrol yacht of the Russian Federal Security Service is in the Black Sea, not far from the coast. There is no other activity in the Black Sea. One of the cruise missile carriers, which is being tested in Russia, has left the Azov and Black Seas and is returning to the plant for completion, Plitinchuk said. Russian military personnel deserting en masse in Kherson region. Russian military personnel are arriving in the temporarily occupied districts of the Kherson region, where they are reportedly deserting in large numbers, according to the partisan movement Atesh. It is noted that Russian occupiers are refusing to carry out combat missions and are deserting their temporary deployment areas. Interestingly, some of those who officially went on leave as deserters were later found in the occupied territory of the Kherson region. Meanwhile, movement agents also report the arrival of a large number of personnel from the occupation army in Novoleksivka. These military personnel are accommodated in vacant abandoned houses. Most of them have multiple tattoos on their bodies. The local population believes that these are people who were previously in places of detention. The message reads, Desertion and refusal to participate in the war is increasingly a problem for the Russian military. Desertion is as hard as it ever was and it all depends on where the soldier is. To leave the front, he must either be granted furlough or be sent to a hospital from where he'll leave for another country, legally or illegally. Running from the front line is very dangerous. People are fully aware that there are criminal consequences, but that doesn't stop them. Some pretend they are one of the dead or injured. Some shoot themselves in the foot to get out to a hospital and then escape from there. Agents of Atesh also report that units of the Russian National Guard have been instructed to capture Ukrainian partisans who provide information about the whereabouts of Russian occupation troops. Additionally, there are reports of the disappearance of Russian military personnel in the settlement. Partisans have discovered a radar station of the Russian occupiers in the temporarily occupied Crimea. It is installed in the area of Balaklava Thermal Power Plant. Russian military personnel are also moving self-propelled artillery units towards Zankoy in the temporarily occupied Crimea. In addition, partisans have observed the movement of a large number of Russians to the temporarily occupied Zankoy in Crimea.